Do you really need to be aware of the count when you dance to salsa music? Well, in this video, we'll answer that question and much more. But first, welcome to Salsa Goals, where we break down salsa music. No, not that kind of break. Okay, let's try again. Where we break down salsa music and dance concepts so that you can build up a strong foundation on the dance floor. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel for all the latest videos. In part two of this video series, we learned that counting out the number of each beat in your mind can help a lot when you are first learning how to dance salsa, kind of like training wheels on a bike, but it can hurt you in the long run. So if you haven't seen that video yet, then check out the link at the top right hand corner of the screen before continuing. But if you have seen it, then welcome to part three of this video series and stick around until the very end for two special bonus tips. So let's get started. Now remember that there are pros and cons for nearly everything and counting out the number of each beat is no different because it can turn into a disadvantage for you but at other times it can be an advantage that actually helps you so if counting unnecessarily can sometimes keep you from fully connecting with the rhythm when can it help you well let's take a look at the musical structure of most salsa songs remember that a measure of music contains four beats and it takes two of those measures together or eight beats of music for you to complete the basic salsa footwork step. This 8-beat rhythmic structure keeps repeating itself like a loop. However, you only take your steps on 6 of those 8 beats. So, for the on-one basic step, the first half of the pattern is 1, 2, 3, and the second half of the pattern, starting with the right foot, is 5, 6, 7. So if you use the rhythm of the cowbell or the campana to guide your footwork, specifically your longest steps or your break steps as they are called, then the forward break step with your left foot will land on beat 1 and the backwards break step with your right foot will land on beat 5. However, although the campana makes a distinctive noise on beats 1 and 5 like this, Those noises sound identical. The same thing happens if you use the conga tumbao rhythm to guide your footwork when dancing on two, New York style. The leader will typically take a break step backwards on beat two with the right foot, while the forward break step with the left foot will land on beat six. The good news is that the conga makes a distinctive slap sound on beat two and on beat six, like this. But the bad news is that this slap sounds exactly the same each time. So if you're dancing on one, how can you tell which beat is number one and which beat is number five if they both sound the same? And if you're dancing on two, how can you distinguish between beat number two and beat number six if they both sound the same? More importantly, why does that even matter? Well, for at least two reasons. Reason number one, certain styles of salsa dancing, such as the linear styles, have stricter rules about when you should be moving forward and when you should be moving backward. For example, when dancing on one LA style, the leader starts by taking a long step forward on beat one with the left foot. This step is known as the forward break step. But ideally, the leader should always be taking that forward break step on beat one each time for the entire song. When dancing on two New York style, the leader will take the break step backwards with the right foot on beat two. And ideally, that backwards break step should always fall on beat number two for the entire song. Occasionally, however, the musicians will throw a wrench in the rhythm and change things up. And they will sometimes add an extra four beats to the standard eight beat rhythmic cycle. This extra measure of music will cause the counts to change, and as a result, what used to be beat number one will now become beat number five. Likewise, what used to be beat number two will now become beat number six, which means that you will suddenly be moving in the opposite direction from which you were moving previously. For example, if you were originally taking your break step forward on beat number one with your left foot, you will now be taking that forward break step on beat number five. Likewise, if you are taking your break step backwards on beat number two with your right foot, you will now be taking that same backwards break step on beat number six. Therefore, you'll need to learn how to do two things. 
First, you'll need to learn how to recognize this change in the music. And to do that, you'll need to be aware of the correct count so that you'll be able to notice when this count changes. And second, you'll need to adjust your dancing accordingly so that you're moving in the correct direction again. So, for more information on how to do that, check out the video link in the top right hand corner of the screen. But there's also another reason that counting is important. What is that? Well, reason number two. It may take an entire 8 beat phrase of the music or more for you to complete a turn pattern or a footwork shine sequence. And even though certain beats in the music might sound the same, the specific move that you are doing on either of those beats might be completely different. For example, you'll need to be able to distinguish the move that you are supposed to do on beat number one from the move that you are supposed to do on beat number five, even though these beats may sound the same. And to do that, you'll need to be aware of the count so that you can recognize which beat is which. So to sum it all up, counting out each beat when you dance has pros and cons. So it's important to be balanced. On one hand, it's important to be aware of the count for salsa music because it'll help you to step correctly when you're first starting out. And once you are more experienced, it can help you to figure out where you are in the music so that you can execute more complex footwork and turns with the correct timing. But on the other hand, once you've learned how to count salsa music correctly, and once you've memorized how the percussion instrument patterns sound for each beat, then it might be best to just let the music count for you instead of mentally counting out the number of each beat while dancing, because that could keep you from truly connecting with the rhythm. And it's all about connecting with the rhythm. Now, before we get to those special bonus tips, here are two reminders regarding some do's and don'ts of salsa timing. First, reminder number one, do remember to memorize the salsa music rhythmic patterns that some of the percussion instruments play so that you can distinguish between each beat when you dance. That way, the sound of the rhythm can guide your footwork by counting for you. However, reminder number two, don't wait to hear a specific beat in the music before you decide to take your steps because that could make you step too late and miss the beat completely, thereby causing you to dance off beat, off beat, off beat. Besides, you might not be able to hear that specific rhythmic pattern all the time. For example, the cowbell or the campana rhythm can guide your footwork when dancing on one, but you may not hear the sound of the campana until later on in the song. Likewise, the conga tumbao rhythm is great for guiding your on-two footwork. And although the conga tumbao is usually played throughout the whole song, it can still sometimes change temporarily or even disappear completely. So how can you use a percussion pattern to guide your footwork if you can't hear that rhythm in the music? Well, you can't, unless you've memorized the rhythm beforehand, because then you won't actually need to hear the rhythm first in order to dance to it. Instead, you'll be able to anticipate the sound and produce the rhythm with your feet, even if that particular instrument is temporarily silent. That way, you'll be able to turn your body into an instrument on the dance floor by participating in the rhythm rather than just passively responding to it. And the first step in doing that is simple. Listen to salsa music as much as possible so that you can learn and memorize those rhythmic patterns. And that leads us to the first special bonus tip. Tip number one, learn how to do shines or solo dance steps and practice them a lot because they can really help you. Because even though you're dancing without a partner, Shines can help you develop rhythm and timing so that your steps are more precise and in sync with the beat. And here's one of the most important keys to unlock salsa timing. Tip number two, finding the count in salsa music can be like solving a puzzle. And the hardest part is often knowing where to start. Because if you can't find beat number one in the music, then you won't know what numbers belong to any of the other beats. And beat number one can be very hard to find with salsa music since so many different percussion instruments are playing a bunch of syncopated rhythmic patterns at the same time. But although salsa music is polyrhythmic, there are certain instruments that can help. For example, in some songs, the pattern of the piano, also known as the piano montuno, can sometimes help you find the first beat. The montuno will often repeat the same piano pattern over and over again like a loop. But each time, before it repeats that pattern, it will usually play the same note twice, once on beat eight and a half, and again on beat one, like this. However, this explanation will probably make a lot more sense if you can actually hear more examples. So check out the link at the top right hand corner of the screen for an example of what I'm talking about. And until next time, stay safe, stay connected to the music, and above all, keep dancing salsa.